Briumvi, a new B-cell depleting medication for multiple sclerosis similar to Ocrevus. It's new, it's shiny, but is it any good? In this video, I'll review how it works, the pharmacology, the results in clinical trials, the side effects, and a few miscellaneous topics like pregnancy and breastfeeding. You can check out these timestamps if you want to skip ahead and references below. And let me know if you have any comments below. My name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday. We'll start with an overview. This medication, Briumvi, or Ublituximab, is an anti anti-CD20 drug. CD20 is the protein on the surface of B lymphocytes, the white blood cells that make antibodies. This is a Me2 drug, very similar to drugs such as rituximab, ocrevus, and casimta, but sometimes it's good to have multiple drugs in the same class because there are slight differences and competition may drive the price down and make drugs more affordable to people with the disease. It is a recombinant, in other words, engineered or bioengineered drug. It is chimeric, having both mouse and human components. It's thought that that makes it more allergenic. Ofatumumab, which is Casimta or Arzera, is fully humanized. But my experience is that all of these drugs cause similar infusion reactions. And the reason for that is it's actually the breakdown of the B cells themselves that causes the infusion reactions because these are immune cells and there are a lot of cytokines within them. And it's an immunoglobulin globin G1 molecule. One thing unique about it is it's glyco-engineered. What that means is there are glycosyl or glucose-like groups added to the molecule in a specific way to make it more efficient in breaking down the B cells so a lower dose can be used. And as you'll see, there's a shorter infusion time compared to other drugs, only one hour after the first few doses. This was originally developed for CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, a cancer of the B cells, but as far as I know, it's currently only approved for multiple sclerosis. It's marketed by TG Therapeutics, a small drug company that has not made other multiple sclerosis drugs, and it was FDA approved in late 2022 for clinically isolated syndrome, people who have a single attack but don't meet the full diagnostic criteria for MS, for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, and active secondary progressive disease. It hasn't been studied in so-called pure progressive MS, so it doesn't have the evidence that, say, Ocrevus has in primary progressive MS. And this diagram shows the slightly different binding sites of the different B cell depleting drugs. You can see the cell membrane of the B lymphocytes in this transmembrane protein, the CD20 protein. And you can see this is where Ofatumumab, Casimta binds, and this is where Briumvi binds in a few different sites, and this is where Rituximab and Ocrevus binds. But the point of all these drugs is to do do the same thing, which is to kill the B cells, and you can see they drop down very quickly and stay low throughout the entire research study, but they do eventually come back. You can see this is the last dose, and this is the end of the study, and they do eventually come back. This is an open-label extension study, so I'm not exactly sure what percentage of people are taking the drug at this point. And Briumbia is given as an intravenous infusion slowly in an infusion center. The dose of the first infusion is lower, 150. 50 milligrams. I like this because it decreases the risk of a severe infusion reaction. This is when infusion reactions are most likely the very first treatment. The second infusion is 450 milligrams two weeks later, and then that same dose every 24 weeks or about six months. So normally the first infusion has a four hour observation, but afterwards only one hour after the first two infusions or at the physician's discretion, presumably if everything is going well, it would just be one hour and you can see the specific instructions for the rates so the very first infusion you start at a very low rate only 10 milliliters per hour increasing slowly so it takes four hours but after that the infusion takes only one hour so that is much more convenient than other drugs although drugs like rituximab and ocrevus can also be given somewhat faster if it's well tolerated but not in one hour and because Briumvi causes infusion reactions it's typically given with pre-medication 20 to 30 minutes before, and what they recommend on the product label is methylprednisolone or solumedrol 100 milligrams and diphenhydramine or Benadryl. And my personal experience is if needed, you can give other medications such as famotidine, which is Pepsid and Tylenol, and you can even give a higher dose of solumedrol like 500 milligrams if necessary. And for people who are very prone to infusion reactions, one trick I've tried is to give prednisone 
three days beforehand, like prednisone, 50 milligrams daily for three days with Prilosec just to protect the stomach. That's one trick I've used. And I'll tell you a little bit about the pharmacology. So it works very, very quickly. B cells are reduced very quickly within 24 hours. In fact, in just a few hours during the infusion. And by four weeks, you achieve 99% or more B cell depletion. So basically, the B lymphocytes in the serum, in the blood, are gone, and clinical benefits were found in clinical trials by four weeks. So it works fairly quickly. The half-life of the drug is 22 days. So after 22 days or around three weeks, the levels of the drug in the blood have reduced by about 50%. And so it takes months for the drug to be completely eliminated. But the drug lasts far beyond its length of time within the bloodstream because it takes the bone marrow so long to regenerate B cells. And the median time to recovery of B lymphocytes is 70.3 weeks more than a year. Interestingly, the pharmacokinetics are not affected by age, sex, or weight. This is very interesting because there's an ongoing study with Ocrevus to try a higher dose, and that was based on a study which found that Ocrevus seems to be more effective in progressive MS in people with a lower body mass index, suggesting that the dose may not be optimized. They didn't find that. The pharmacokinetics weren't really affected by weight. Mild kidney disease and mild liver disease weren't a problem. So if you have mild kidney disease or liver disease, you can still take this medication. But for moderate or severe liver or kidney disease, the effect is unknown and it has not been studied. Uh, you can get antibodies against these drugs. And in fact, they're very common. You can generate antibodies in your blood against the drug in 81% of cases, but it doesn't really seem to matter. It doesn't seem to affect the safety or efficacy of the drug. The drug will still deplete B cells, even if the antibodies are present. But how good is Briumvi? We'll look at the results of clinical trials. And these are the two phase three trials summarized in one publication. They are the ultimate one and ultimate two pivotal trials. There were a total of 1,094 participants, a median follow-up of 95 weeks or around two years. And this was a randomized, double-blind, double-dummy trial. So randomized, you were randomized to one treatment or the other. Double-blind, you didn't know what treatment you were getting. And the examiner didn't know what treatment you were getting. And it was double-dummy. So this is a trial of Briumvi, the infusion, against Abagio, 14 milligrams, a once a day pill. So Briumbi was thought to be likely high in efficacy because it's similar to Ocrevus, Rituximab, other high efficacy medications. And Abagio is known to be somewhat lower in efficacy. So they're trying to prove prove that this drug isn't just good, it's better than another multiple sclerosis drug. And it was a double dummy trial, meaning if you were randomized to get Briumvi, you would have to take a placebo pill. And if you were randomized to get Abagio, you would take a placebo infusion or normal saline. So you wouldn't know which drug you were getting. Now they looked at multiple things, but the primary endpoint was relapses measured by annualized relapse rate or relapses per person per year and secondary endpoints included MRI and disability progression. I think it's important to know who was in the clinical trial. So these are the baseline characteristics of ultimate one and ultimate two. You can see on average, they were around 36 years old, 60 to 65% were women, and almost everyone which was Caucasian. This is unfortunate and limits the applicability to other ethnicities. Although there is a very good study on Ocrevus in African American, Americans, so I would presume that Briambri would be equally effective in African Americans as Caucasians just by inference. In terms of the type of MS, almost everyone, around 98% had relapsing remitting MS. Very few had secondary progressive MS, even though they did get active secondary progressive MS on the product label. You can see the duration of MS was approximately seven years on average, and most people were untreated. They hadn't taken prior disease-modifying therapies around 50 to 60 percent of the participants. This was a relatively active group. More than one relapse in the last year on average and around two relapses in the last two years on average, though they had relatively low disability. An average EDSS or expanded disability status scale of three
3, which would be considered low to moderate disability. And you can see their T2 lesion volume. And many of them had gadolinium enhancing lesions. You can see the average number of enhancing lesions was 1 to 2.6 or so, relatively active. I presume a lot of these people were newly diagnosed with MS and they had an active MRI at the time of entering into the trial. And now we move to the results and we'll start with the primary endpoint, relapses, the annualized relapse rate. Now overall, the results of these trials are very similar to the Asclepios trials, which are the randomized trials of Afatumumab, Casimta, against the same pill, Abajo. And that makes a lot of sense because Briumbi and Casimta are both B cell depleting agents. They both essentially do the same thing or trying to do the same thing. So in the ultimate one study, Briumvi reduced relapses by 60% relative to Abagio. So relative to another active agent, that's very impressive. However, the absolute difference wasn't that small. If you look at these numbers, for Abagio, it was 0.188 annualized relapse rate or around 0.2 relapses per person per year or one relapse every five years. And so you're really only stopping one relapse every 10 years. And that's just because there weren't that many relapses in the study overall. Most people were stable. The same was true, roughly speaking, in Ultimate 2, where there was a 49% relapse reduction. In terms of MRI scans, it looked amazing. There was a reduction in enhancing or gadolinium positive lesions by 97% in Ultimate 1 and 96% in Ultimate 2, basically very few people were having enhancing lesions taking this drug. It basically stocked active lesions, and this has been shown with other B-cell depleting drugs. In terms of new or enlarging T2 lesions, it wasn't quite as good, but still very, very good 92% reduction and 90%. So more or less, people weren't getting any significant number of new lesions. And if you look at the raw numbers, 0.2 new lesions on average, that's only one per every five people getting this drug. So four out of five people essentially had no new lesions, and maybe one of those five people had one new lesion on average. That's a very stable group in terms of MRI scans. But arguably, MRI scans aren't that important. After all, they're just pictures. What about disability? Does this drug prevent you from becoming more disabled? This is a marker called 12-week confirmed disability disability progression. And this is looking at the EDSS or expanded disability status scale score. And what that means is that you get worse and then 12 weeks later or three months later, you're still worse. So some people have a little bit of fluctuation, but if you get worse and stay worse, that's more concerning that you've actually progressed in your disability and it wasn't just random fluctuation. And you can see with teraflunamide or Abagio, 5.9% got worse compared to 5.2% with Briumbi. Not a huge difference. If you think about it in absolute terms, 0.7%, Basically, you'd have to give Briumbi rather than Abagio to more than 100 people just to prevent one person from having disability progression. Now, if you look at 24-week confirmed disability progression, it's a little bit better. This is you get worse, and then six months later, you're still worse. So six-month confirmed disability progression, and it's 4.8% versus 3.3%, so a little bit larger than difference. Interestingly, with improvement, the, it looks much better. Now, this drug doesn't enter the central nervous system. It doesn't grow nerve tissue, but many people taking it do improve simply because they're stable, they're not having inflammation, maybe they're recovering from prior relapses, or their nutrition and physical activity is better. So you definitely can improve with relapsing multiple sclerosis or even progressive multiple sclerosis. And you can see 12-week confirmed disability improvement. This means you improve, and then it wasn't just fluctuation. 12 weeks later, you're still better. 12% achieved this with Briumvi versus 6%. And that's a 6% absolute difference, which is not too bad. And looking at 24-week confirmed disability improvement, it was 9.6% versus 
5.1% with the pill, so 88% more improved, though the absolute numbers were about 5.5% improved relative to Abagia. Another thing they looked at is NIDA, or no evidence of disease activity. This means no new lesions, no relapses, and no disability progression. And you can see there was a pretty large difference in the Ultimate One study. It was 15% with NIDA taking Abagio versus 44.6% taking Brian and in Ultimate 2, it was 11.4% with Abagio versus 43% with Briumvi. So you're definitely much more likely to achieve NIDA with Briumvi, although this is largely driven by MRI scans. Briumvi was just so good at suppressing those new MRI lesions. Okay, but now let's shift gears to the side effects of the medications. And like all B-cell depleting medications, the main concern is having reactions, infusion reactions, and having immunosuppression and infections in the long run. Now, a lot of these reactions are not true allergic reactions where your immune system is attacking the drug. They're infusion reactions caused by depletion of the B cells. So when those B cells break open, they spill out their cytokines and cause a lot of inflammation. So in a sense, it doesn't really matter what drug you take. What they report as the rate of infusion reactions is 43% for the first infusion, 10% with the second infusion, 8% with a third, which is fairly consistent with other B cell depleting drugs like rituximab and ocrevus. And of course, it depends on exactly what you count as an infusion reaction. Generally speaking, if it's an infusion reaction and not an allergy, you can continue with the drug. You may have to stop the infusion, take some Benadryl and Solucortef perhaps, and resume it. Of course, if you're actually allergic to the drug or you have a serious infusion reaction, then you may not be able to continue it. It's very different from having, say, a penicillin allergy where you just have to avoid that drug. 3% were reported to have serious infusion reactions, which of course may require discontinuation. Of course, the other effect of this drug is that it can cause low immunoglobins. One thing that I'll say is that even if you have no B cells, a lot of people taking these drugs don't have a lot of infections. Why is that? Well, one possible reason is you have other immune cells, you have T cells, you have neutrophils, you have macrophages. Another reason is that some B cells turn into plasma cells. These are larger cells that also make antibodies, but they do not have the CD20 receptor, so they're essentially immune to Briumvi. And so you have these big cells pumping out immunoglobins, and your antibody levels are actually normal. Now, in a two-year clinical trial, it makes the drug look safer than it really is because sometimes it takes time for those plasma cell levels to go down and for those immunoglobin levels to go down and for the risk of infections to go up. So keep in mind that this trial, which is only two years, may make the drug a little bit safer than it actually is if you continue it every six months forever. Personally, I recommend following B cell counts and immunoglobin levels, which may become low only later on. One thing concerning about this trial is they found that some people had low neutrophils. This is a different type of immune cell, not even part of the adaptive immune system, not really related to the direct initiation of inflammation in multiple sclerosis. This is part of the innate immune system. And they found that 15% had neutropenia or low neutrophils, but only 3% had less than 1.0 times 10 to the ninth per liter. Be careful of the units here, I would read this as a thousand neutrophils and less than one per about one percent had less than 500 or 0.5 times 10 to the ninth per liter. Now, personally, I probably wouldn't be too concerned as long as the neutrophils were greater than 1,000 or greater than 1.0 times 10 to the ninth. If they were less than that, you may have to be careful. Of course, talk to your own provider. And of course, the result of all of this can be infections. And if you looked at the overall infections between the two drugs, there wasn't a huge difference. Of course, we would expect Briumvi to be higher risk with a greater chance of infections relative to Abagio, but the overall overall rate of infections was 56% versus 54% with Abagio. This is probably because almost anyone can get some kind of minor infection. The most common things they found were upper respiratory tract infections, 45%, and urinary tract infections, 10% with Briumvi. However, serious infections were a little more common with Briumvi than Abagio, 
5% versus 3%. And there were even three deaths with Brianna B in the clinical trials, one due to post measles encephalitis, one due to pneumonia, and one due to salpingitis due to an entopic pregnancy. This is an infection of the fallopian tube. This is concerning, especially since the average age was only around 36, though there were over a thousand people in these two trials. And to look closely at serious adverse events, they reported an overall rate of 9.5% with Briumvi versus 6.2% with Abagio. This was partly driven by infections, 4% infections leading to serious adverse events versus 2.6% with Abagio. They also looked at cancer, the reason being that an increased risk of breast cancer was reported to be a possible side effect with a similar drug, Ucrevis. In the trials, there were two cancers in people getting Briumvi. One was endometrial cancer, the other uterine cancer. One person getting Abagio had tongue cancer. This really isn't a significant signal, probably similar to the background rate of cancer in the general population. I should also note that certain blood tests are recommended for people taking this drug. For instance, a chronic hepatitis panel to see if you have hepatitis B or C. The reason being, if you do and you take this drug, it's been reported with other similar drugs. It could cause a reactivation of these viruses. It could also be helpful to test the immunoglobin levels and hold the drug if you're having infections or your immunoglobin levels are normal, excuse me, low, in particular if the immunoglobin G is less than 500. And immunoglobin M represents the newer form of immunoglobins, and those can go down quite quickly. Some other blood tests I would likely recommend would be a complete blood count, particularly to look for low neutrophils, liver function tests, varicella antibodies, and even a younger person could consider a shingles vaccine with the killed Shingrix vaccine if they have low antibodies, along with the lymphocyte counts and pregnancy tests for a woman. In terms of other potential serious infections reported as possibilities on the product label, of course, hepatitis B and C reactivation, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML, the feared brain infection caused by the JC virus, mostly associated with the MS drug Tysabri, has rarely been reported to be associated with Ocrevus and Rituximab, so it is a possibility with Brian v, though it would be extraordinarily unlikely. And of course, any serious infection is possible, including COVID-19, although by the time you're watching this video, that's probably not as much of a consideration. And I'll end with a few miscellaneous topics. One is that this is an immunosuppressant, so it's advised to avoid living vaccines, vaccines with living components while taking Brian V, and if you need them, you should take them four or more weeks prior to starting the drug. It's not advised to get pregnant while taking this medication, it hasn't been studied in pregnancy. It's been reported with other B cell depleting drugs that one side effect can be a low B lymphocyte count in the infant, weakening their immune system. And high doses of Brian B in pregnant monkeys led to fetal loss and birth defects, so it's potentially teratogenic. And you should avoid pregnancy, according to the product label, for six months or more after receiving Brian B. In terms of breastfeeding, there's no data, but you should probably err on the side of caution. With drugs such as rituximab, approximately one two hundredth of the blood blood level of rituximab can get into the breast milk. I don't know if that's true for Briumvi. This is a brand new drug. I'm not sure if it will be available by the time you're watching this video. It's expected to be available in February 2023, and the list price is $59,000 per year, although it may cost you something different depending on your insurance. And so as you can probably tell from my overall presentation, I don't think this is a new or innovative drug. It's definitely a copycat drug, but it's a perfectly good drug with a reasonable safety and efficacy profile, probably very similar to other B cell depleting drugs. My personal bias, I would probably tend to go with an older, more established drug if it was me taking it, just because you never know if there's going to be a new and unexpected side effect with a new drug. And it just doesn't seem to have a very clear advantage. But hey, it does have that one hour infusion. And hey, more options, more competition may increase availability of drugs to people with MS. And you never know what kind of rare intolerance you may have with another product in this class. So I'd love you to know your thoughts on Briumvi, especially if you've taken it, what were your results like and your side effects, and do you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about Briumvi in the comments below.